Here's where things get intense. Indonesian peat forests comprise of waterlogged, decaying organic matter called peat that is thousands of years old. This compressed matter could be up to 20 meters deep in some places. You could fit a six-story building underneath all of that. They are wonderful ecological environments and an example of the variety of nature found on planet Earth. There are no peat forests elsewhere in the solar system. Of all eight planets, the Indonesians own nearly half of all tropical peat forests known to exist. These forests are excellent carbon sinks. They take in CO2 from the atmosphere and convert that into peat matter through biological process. So when you burn this stuff, you are actually releasing carbon that probably dates back to the time of Muhammad and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ! The carbon gathers in the air and crosses the Straits of Malacca and that's the reason for the haze. Peat fires are hard to put out because the fire can go into the peat and resurface elsewhere. That's why the Indonesians have a hard time of stopping the haze. The only way of truly stopping it is to wait for the rainy season to flood the area. What's happening in Indonesia isn't just a Southeast Asian problem, it's a problem for all of humanity. The immediate effects of the haze include breathing problems, watery eyes, cancelled schools, and a generally depressed outlook on life. But the haze also has a much larger global impact. Rewind to 1997 when 20% of Indonesian peat forest was cleared for the Mega Rice project. That released 2.5 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. That was the mother of all hazes, causing hundreds of deaths, states of emergencies in different countries, and resulted in Operation Haze, the biggest cross-border firefighting mission in human history. Some say the haze even reached India and Islamabad, Pakistan. Fast forward to the bi-yearly haze of today, although it's not as intense as 1997, but we still release up to a billion tons of CO2 per incident for the past 10 years. In the end, it all adds up. We're writing checks the planet can't cash, and we've only got one bank account. The CO2 released into the atmosphere doesn't care about national boundaries. It may be created here, but that haze particle from 1997 is probably somewhere over Sweden right now. The particles released today may end up in Saudi Arabia next year, and the United States the year after that. This is explained by another 7th grade science concept called gas diffusion. Now I'm not saying the Indonesians can't have their rice or their palm oil, I'm saying optimize your production, know what you're getting into when you mess with mother nature, invest in high impact science, and get your shit straight. All of it. All of your shit. Get it straight. In the past 20 years, we have disturbed a sleeping giant that we know little to nothing about. And as we hurtle into the uncharted depths of the 21st century, we will soon discover the effects of waking it up. The only way for all of us to escape that catastrophe is to change our mindset from a simple, bounded, nationalistic one to a more holistic, planetary one. Because it's like what Ed Sheeran said in his song. If this is to end in fire, then we should all burn together. My name is Son of Terra 92 and this has been Science Epic. Cheers.